Okay, g'day people, it's Matt here from Matt Carves. So I'm drawing these cards. I'm gonna tell you about it very shortly, but I've got a gun there, I've got a skull, I've got some crystals, and up next is a thumb. And I've got this crazy little snail here with a house on it. I'm not quite sure what to make of that, but I'm gonna use that as the main part and use those other parts as sort of like add-ons. So what I am doing here is I'm doing a thing called Monster Bash. Now Monster Bash is the brainchild of a few creators on YouTube and I'm going to leave their link on links on the description but they do these cool projects where they draw these cards and they pull them out of the hat and make monsters out of them. They're more of, more of kind of like a modeling kind of aspect so I am making it out of wood today so I'm going to use sort of like modeling techniques where I make all the components you could see there I was making the kind of slug thing and I'm going to make the little antennae there with the little eyes in it. I'm not going to show you all of them because this is a, there's a lot of parts to this. So we've got the teeth there. So, and I got, uh, how I randomly drew them was I actually did it on a live. And I got some of my subscribers to draw those cards on live. So it's kind of their carving as well, which is pretty cool. So there I am making the teeth. It's always sort of like, doing these things to kind of, sort of like make the components and see if they're fitting together quite nicely. Here we have the little house on the top. It's out of elm. And really just putting in details here. So lots of little details. Been watching these modelers for quite a while. There's Miscast and uh, a lot of other ones. I can't remember the names of them. I'm gonna put them up on screen, I think. Anyway, so I've been watching them and they do some really, really cool things. And it's quite inspirational really because uh, you follow a lot of wood carvers and they do their thing and I kind of thought oh it'd be cool to like mix it up and so this is a real kind of creative process where you sort of like are forced into something you don't usually do so I'm never going to do a skeleton riding a snail coming out of a house yeah so I'm just making the roof there made that out of rosewood beautiful wood sped it up of course because it's quite a long process really all of these components so this took me a long time okay so here we go again we're putting it together to see how it looks right, okay so I think I think I think it's looking pretty cool the thing is at the end I'm gonna have to glue all these components together and put these things together and here I am I'm making the skull and you can see I've got a, like a reference here it's not a real skull of course it's a 3d printed skull great to have like references like that even if you're doing it on a different scale you can sort of see where all the three dimensions are it's the first time I've carved a skull this small I think actually it's the first time I've carved a human skull anyway I think it turned out pretty good Okay, so here I am using a taper burr from Cutsall and then lots of other little burrs. I think this is a little cutter sphere burr, really good for these tiny little details. You use it really, really lightly when you're using these kind of things in really small places. If you press too hard, you will take out a nose or an eye socket. I want to do that. And here I am just doing that side bit that goes along to your ear channel. Don't know what that's called. But it's got a hole in it. Yeah, and I'm adding the obligatory kind of crack to the skull. Which I think actually turned out quite well. Wasn't quite sure how to do that. Yes, makes it great. If you're going to do a skull, you've got to have a crack in the head. Kind of adds to the sculliness of the skull, I feel. Right. Yeah, so it's uh, gun time and I have carved this out of purple heart. It's a benefit of doing this sort of like component carving. I can choose my woods as I go along. It sort of adds a new dimension to the carving as opposed to carving it all out of one piece. Which I actually think it would be weaker if you carved this out of one piece. So, uh, just adding in little details there. I always go lightly when I do this. There's no point in... Uh, using really a lot of force. 
I'm leaving a lot of details out, but you know, you just put in the ones that make it uh, look kind of like gun-like. Okay, so here I am. I'm trying to fit the hand onto the gun, then I'll fit the hand onto the arm. It's a lot of fitting of certain components here, so just trying to like widen that thumb and well, the gap in between the thumb and the fingers, and yeah, just trying to get it. Oh, I think I've got it the fit there, and so we're away laughing. So if I join it onto the arm, and now we're going to join it onto the house. Well, I'm going to see what it looks like on the house. So it's looking pretty cool. So I've got the arms coming out of windows on the sides. Oh yes, uh, only probably another 50 more components to go. Well, actually not too many. Now I started these uh, little bobby bits on the side. I got carried away. I quite liked adding these. So I did a lot of them, around the mouth and everything. So pretty much actually we're coming up to the end. I'm not going to show you actually putting it all together because that was just a frustrating piece of work. So uh, here are the... Um